With the Laurie O'Reilly Trophy safely locked away, the Blackburns look to finish their biggest test season with an emphatic statement at home. Their sixth and final match of the year, the only one in New Zealand, brings them back to Fortress Eden Park. for the last time this year and the first time on home soil. And I think being here at Eden Park, Ruby, is just a little bit more edge in the Black Ferns today. Yeah, even I'm getting a little bit emotional up here. That anthem, that haka and the mana these wahine toa are bringing to the stadium tonight. There's plenty of people too, might I add, that have come here tonight to totoko or support this amazing match. And I'm proud to be New Zealand right now. Amy Barrett here on from the South Africa, assisted by Rebecca Mani and Brittany Andrew. Lee Jeffrey is the TMO for this, the second test. The Laurie O'Reilly Memorial Series already locked up by the Black Ferns. They look to complete their season with a fifth win from six test matches for the Wallaroos. Well, it's all about improvement, showing a better side than what they did last week. No, you can't, you can't just work. You're gonna use Yep, Grace Hamilton, the leader on your screen of this Wallery side. They have plenty more to give from last week, and they know it. Really looking forward to this match. Underway on a big evening at Eden Park, and it'll go straight down the throat of Kendra Coxedge and who else to take it up straight away Charmaine McMenamin two tries last week a stand up for the Black Ferns but an error from Nata Oringamate uncharacteristic mistake from New Zealand early yes it's definitely not like Takura Oringamate but good to get that one out of the way very good attacking opportunity early on for the Wallaroos and hoping the set piece will be a good foundation to get some attack Firepower out there early, KT. Oh, most definitely, Ruben. This will be a great set, a great confidence booster for them straight on attack. This lady's going to be integral, isn't she? Poor Marty in the first five position. Eliseva Batibasanga, late change Crops. into the starting lineup Sink. at halfback for Australia. Sink. Georgie Kornak out injured, concussion in training yesterday. Oh, no balance, and plenty of advice early for the referee as well. Who's not happy? <laughs> it's the first one, let's let it happen, okay? There's no better place than the scrum for a bit of banter between the front rows. 
Seeing where the ref's going to sit early on, which is important for a front row. Crouch. Beautiful six, angle that spider eight. cam. Hopefully Five. they'll sort this one out. Set. Oh, good stable base for Australia for Hamilton off the back, and she goes to Bati Basanga. Here's Carter in the line from fullback. Early touch from Mika Carter. They want to get her and Murphy involved early. So might be some turnover ball here, though, for New Zealand. It was just untidy from Australia, and they've handed the ball back to the New Zealand skipper, Elder. Demant shoveling it across the line, but there's plenty of room out here for Hohepa. She's got the space to Wycliffe outside her. Hohepa to Wycliffe. Wycliffe chopping in on that right foot, looking for support. Australia come back and scramble well up towards the 22, New Zealand. It's 60, 70 metre bust by the Blackburns. There was just acres of space for Hohepa. And now the forwards go to work through McMenamin. Cox Edge just sniping around the base, almost getting away. And now Nata Oningamati with a clean carry. Step back, step back. Australia's defensive line have scrambled that well and got set. This is where the Blackburns are dangerous as their power forwards carry it up again. Nata at that time. And now through the middle, her front row mate Nelson. Cox is looking to spread and stepping as Demund is stepping straight through as Rua hate Demund and under the post and three minutes gone. Well, how about that for a start of this mighty Black Fern side? There was a mismatch there out on the left. Demand saw it and she absolutely made the most of it. Speak to Grace and say, listen, make sure you're wrapping. Very good start for this, the for this Black Fern side, Demand. Smiling. Now, this is the mismatch that got my head scratching. That is the number two from the Wallaroos trying to get a hand on Hohepa, which you're just not going to do. A, an excellent mismatch. Carla Hohepa identified it very early on, and that's what set up this try. As you can see here, Demand noticed it was a four on three. She went straight through the gap. Nobody else saw it. Beautiful playmaker move, KT. What a thing is, Rebbe. You've got to earn the right to go wide, and that's what the Black Ferns did. They went from ruck to ruck to ruck, but you can take it all the way back to their own 22, where Pia Tapsell got the turnover from the match. You saw the end result. Carla Hoifip with the break, and there's the finish. Seven points to nil. Near perfect start for the Black Ferns, and it's Luahe Demant for the opening try. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff we want to see. Play my playmakers identifying she saw Buddy Basanga trying to call her forwards across or anybody across they just didn't come in time black friends getting the first meat pie Kramer again and it's action replay is McMenamin Carries the Push ball back. up. And already New Zealand getting over that advantage line with ease. Well, good hands, Demant. And now again the space. Hohe, but this time she's got Winniata. Winniata with her pace has Wycliffe there, tries to stab it through. It breaks down in the end, but that's fortunate for Australia. So much with so much room for the Black Ferns. Jeez, the Black Ferns are just getting outside of that last defender as the Wallers, as we see that number 12 is the last one there. That one skip pass is getting open. Grace Hamilton lucky to stop this kick from Winniata and thanking the ball for going out. Let's go. He might have been able to catch that one, KT. I would have knocked it on, Ruby. <laughs> but you can see already Hohepa is causing absolute havoc in that 13 jersey. Throw to the front is good from the Black Ferns. And they set such a weapon for them. Inching towards the sideline, though. Doing well to keep it in play here. Still there. For New Zealand. Somewhere in there, there's a knock on. That's a little let off for Australia, and everyone wants to get on with things as well. Carry on with things, rather. Somewhere there's a bit of love in there, too, Ricky. As the ladies walk away and leave it. But I think Kendra Coxedge would love to argue her case in that scenario, but 
the Wallaroos. We talked about it before the game. The lineouts were an area they wanted to clean up, and that is not easy to do. Yeah, good defence though from the Wallaroos with their counter ruck. I think it was the captain Grace Hamilton just lying over there. Ball became a more didn't have a move, and they much needed that because the power already in the forwards from the Blackburn starting to stand out. Hits. Crouch! Sake! Sake! Hold it! I'm gonna bring you up. I need to see Let's more of your shoulder here so you can bring it up. Big tall mills! Got to here! The Wallaroos back line have inserted Kramer at the number 11. Just before the 10. Beautiful shot there, as you can see. The inside ball could be on with all backs from the Wallaroos side ready. It looks like they might run this one out. Find. Set. Hamilton off the bat. Kramer on the wraparound. Here she is, Laurie Kramer with a pace. And then the ball flicked out the back for Paul Marty. Australia breaking out, getting it wide quickly. Here's Murphy, the danger. One on one with Winnie Arthur. Winnie Arthur goes high. Murphy around the outside. Mahalia Murphy's got one to beat. She's there. What an incredible effort from Mahalia Murphy. Well, well, well. We talked about this woman before the game and the damage she can do. And the Wallerers are absolutely up for this try. It all started with the set piece, but that woman with the ball in her hand, Mahalia Murphy, first try tonight, but wow, that was some footwork. Now, Laurie Kramer, like we mentioned, popped in that inside ball. The number 10 wrapped right around, and it was all about getting the ball into the hands of that one right there. But look at this work. There was plenty to do. Shoves off Winiata, shoves off Leti Inga, and lastly, she saved the best for last on Wycliffe. That was outstanding. Yeah, pure determination here from Murphy. Look at this, the timing of the fan right in the face. But she keeps her balance and then goes for a second slice at it. Mahalia Murphy absolutely shreds him. We were wondering what Glenn Moore was talking about in terms of improving defence, but I think Mahalia Murphy just wrote an entire book explaining to everyone. That was some sensational stuff, and it showed what this Wallaroo side can do. Uh, pace and power on the outside. They just didn't get her the ball last week and showed straight away what she has got. Mahalia Murphy and now Kramer to level us up. Just pushes it away though. So it is still New Zealand in front, but what a response from Australia. Seven points to five, the Black Ferns lead. Well, they show they lay a platform, then they've got strike power on the outside. This Wallaroo team, but what I like about it, they got everyone in their back line. It started with Kramer, got a nice offload out to the back line, and the miss pass by Lefau, fuck old Lucia, was brilliant. Uh, Australia through their impressive skipper Hamilton. Charges up once more. Gee, what a boost that will have given them. And now Kramer will look to clear away. They've only gone down as far as halfway in McMenamin, but penalty for offside against New Zealand. Referee there just explaining Tapsell from the Black Ferns was never onside. But yes, Ricky, you're right. It's given this Wallery side such a boost early on. They learnt from last week. Take it on those Lulings and boy, are they here to play. Tapsel there had an outstanding first year for that woman, but just caught offside there. Already Australia having to make the most tackles, but look at that stat. It was absolutely the other way around last weekend, so Wallaroos making the Black Ferns work for this title. Well, this was a big issue for the Wallaroos last week, but that's much better from Avril Mitchell. The throw perfect straight away. And here's another backline move from Australia. Hit a herangi. Well looked after that time. As Paul tries to step her way through. Don't milk it. Bobby Basanga digging in. And now Hamilton 
getting through the first tackle up over halfway. Through the hands they go, met by heavy defence. Natsua underneath and Smith over the top for New Zealand. Sliced off the side of the boot from Bati Basanga. Oh, a little confusion in the New Zealand back line, but Letty Yinga brings it down safely. And a chance for New Zealand to counter here, just on their own side of halfway. Push back. Push back. Cox Edge trying to get things moving. Natsua. And now Ali turning around the Australian defenders. Hey, it's only far as Carter. He puts in a Ugly old return kick. Won't want to look at that and hand the ball back to the Black Ferns. No, good play Space here. Back. Making the Black Ferns really work for every position. Last week the Black Ferns won oh, yeah. an easy 70 to 30. But the Wallaroo is really making them work for that 70 this week. I'm pushing a kick there, Mika Carter, as she elevates from the bench this week. Territory in the Black Ferns' favour. Smith brings it down off the top, and here goes Coxedge on her own, Kendra Coxedge. Black Ferns need a half back, and the forwards all pick and go again. Back. Smith. Dangerous. Off the ball. <laughs> so it's against Black. Okay. You can hear the referee, yeah, chatting in the it's background to her assistant. And the penalty's gone against New Zealand yeah. for something off the Clear ball. Clear side entry at the breakdown. Clear side entry from the breakdown. So the touchies noticed Is something no one else did. On side team. entry from the breakdown, I think it was the court. I think this is where the Wallaroos want to live here, Ruby. Just slow the play down. They don't want to play quick, and that's probably into the Black Ferns' hands. Just take it to the set piece. The line has been good the first one. Yeah, absolutely, KT. If we just have a look at a couple of breakdowns ago, Coxedge with a nice little break, but perhaps number four, Eloise Blackwell, taking that side entry and taking that Wallaroos player out illegally. Mitchell again, a much better line out, far more simple by Australia this week. Pass isn't good for poor Marty. He has to sit and wait for it, and that allowed the oncoming defence, but New Zealand oh giving away another one, penalty. And and just allowing one. Australia to take the heat off. Yeah, well, early on, discipline becoming, or yeah. well, playing its part, rather. There was a couple in there not rolling and then hands in the ruck, so the Black Ferns will want to really stop this penalty concession. Sorry, this penalty conceded three in a row. They'll want to stop that right now. Hey, Liz. So we just have another look there. The Wallaroos, like you said, KT, taking their time. One not rolling and one putting their hands in there, as we can see. So referee's not having any of it, any of it, but she's been clear about it. This time down the back, and it's not straight. First so what had been working well, and they'd simplified it and gone to the front. Australia trying to get down the back, Lana, so scrum. and they make a mess of it. I don't know what that is, Lana. Yeah. Yeah, as Going the Black Ferns yep. have another turn at a line out of their own. It's interesting to pick the line out here, Ruby. I think the scrum, you bring everyone in and have an opportunity to release your back line, but... How many have you got in? If you're going to move around, we'll give them time to adjust. Four. It's four. Maybe this is why, KT, they're trying to confuse everybody, including us. Okay. Easily done. <laughs> they're known for being sneaky at the line out, the Black Fern. Nata, hiding a Marty. Oh, well, he's gone to ground in the process. Tatsil it was, I think, might have been the target but it's fallen for New Zealand and they're set on the 10 metre line. McMenamin and Natua on the charge, took a Natua. Oh ball, it hands over there. Millie Boyle I think it was for Australia and look at them come rushing in. That's oh, the captain Hamilton, excuse me. Follow, easy, no, no, easy, easy. Yes, Grace Hamilton. You know, she didn't have a lot of opportunities last week but everybody I think wanted her to stand up again this week and showing her physical dominance early on and like you say kt just slowing it down taking their time and taking their meters yeah that's the second one for the captain and 15 minutes of play but it looked awkward white okay. from the get-go didn't it the line out was confusing they wanted in the end but 
the end result was, look, there's no support player here for Natua. The bridge over, Coxie has to come in, but look at the physical mismatch. That's immovable. Well done. Yeah, bless her for trying, Kendra Coxedge, but that's a bantam weight against a heavyweight, and Hamilton wins out, and now Australia gets some good line-out ball, and Bucky Basanga goes straight up through the middle until finding the face of Eloise Blackwell. And now Patu with a good carry. Promising signs here for Australia. Boyle. Australian forwards lining up to pick and go again as Mitchell's cleaned out of there by New Zealand. Patu makes some metres. And the Black Ferns get the turnover. She survived the cleanup. Well, brilliant the clean from the Black Ferns. They were asked to stand up on defence. And just as Grace Hamilton shows her excellence, the Black Ferns show theirs. Yeah, Pia Tapsel again, Ruby in the own 22. That's her second one as well. So the blind side doing extremely well there. Took her medicine as well, but it is getting niggly. Sideline. Yeah, it sounds like there's plenty of chatter down there too, KT. You're just about getting cleaned out yourself. Back's gone. If we have a look at Tapsel here. Nice and clear release right over that ball. And yes, KT, I'm not going to lie, I'm a little concerned for your safety. Blackwell at the front back for Nata Oringamate. Oh, good clear out, good counter up from Australia again. Almost got through and pinched it, but did so illegally. Was good. Second one wasn't good. Oh, that was. Yeah, just a reminder for New Zealand about no, no, protecting. No, no, no. no. Ladies, settle down. So down. much love between these two teams. I can feel them on the Trans Tasman competition, but yeah, I think it was happened. Hewitt yep. in the end from the Wallaroos who was penalised for incorrect entry, but very, very close to turning that over. Fifth penalty in a row in as many minutes from both sides. Yes, your hips have got to be front on through the gate, and that was definitely side. Line out on halfway is a little bit messy for New Zealand, but Coxish does well under pressure from Hamilton. Good turnover. Hamilton might have stolen this away from New Zealand. I think she has and gets a penalty as well. Australia really getting in the fight here, up for it at Eden Park. And there's plenty of feeling too. Oh, a few too many dad jokes in there by the looks of a rookie. No one's impressed. She's keeping off there. But it's, it's a bit of unnecessary niggle. I'm going to ask you as captains just to step up and control the discipline, yeah. please. Okay. Yeah. It's a great contest at the breakdown. Keep fighting it out. But anything off the ball, anything off the whistle, we're going to deal with. Yeah. Okay. Making it nice and clear yeah. to the captains, the referees. Cool it off. Everybody's a bit hot in the kitchen. But even she said she's enjoying this breakdown game. And so am I. We might have to get Fiat all back down to make some arrests because there's so much stealing going on. At their breakdown. So it was Grace Hamilton right there, right in the in the heart of the kitchen. Beautiful awareness of where that ball is. Beautiful shot. Wow. Chance to attack here for Australia down the back, and it's again messy, and it's in the hands of the New Zealand hooker Nata Oringamate. Another let off for the Black Ferns. Oh, Coxie's just trying to turn them around. That's gone straight down as far as Kramer, though, and she's got Carter in support looking to counter. Here's Mika Carter with Hiraherangi outside. Still going, Ariana Hiraherangi. She's got a good turnover. Yeah, lost the down. Oh, yeah. oh, New Zealand had the turnover, but it's just gone back in the green and gold side as Bati Basanga looks to clear away. Mato, flat ball. In midfield again. No, it's a rock. Last week. Now Bati Basanga can try and clear it. Charge from Blackwell. No one knows where it's gone except Les Elder. She's the first to get a hand to it. And it'll be Blackfern's ball on the 22. Pilla, step back. Step back. Cox Edge works the short side uh, with no, Tapsel. 
Nata Einigamati, she's been prominent in this opening 20 minutes. Fair enough, no advantage. No. And <laughs> Kendra Coxedge wanted to get on with it. They'll go back and set a scrum. So much going on. What I love is Australia know, you know, the Wallaroos know they could have played a bit more of a physical game last week, and that's exactly what they're trying to do this week. Keep everybody in nice and tight, physically be dominant up front, and make and force this Black Friends team to do the same and take the opportunities away from their outsides. The foul fuck Olsi Lee on your screens causing all sorts of trouble in the breakdown as well. So it is a very, very good match up front. Yeah, that's one thing you can really see from last week's effort, the targeting the breakdown, Ruben, what's that's doing? It's making the Black Ferns get more and more tighter, so not getting the opportunity to get wide, but here's a great attacking flat line from the Black Ferns. Set. Great attacking opportunity here for New Zealand and with a penalty. Be the decision here from New Zealand. They're going to keep the pressure on. No, going to posts, looking for points. Yeah, not a bad decision. I mean, the Wallaroos are putting all sorts of pressure on them. Would take them out to to lead by a try. Well, there is quite a substantial breeze behind King Cox Edge here, and I think it's just a settler for New Zealand as well. They haven't been down here for a while, so. Australia have dominated possession of late, so this is probably just a rest for them, man. If you can come away with points, even better. Had a tough day with the boot last week, Kendra Coxedge. Three from seven. It's one in a handy position. You can see that breeze that Carl Tenana on the sideline was talking about. This time, no problem for Cox Edge. Straight as a die, and she extends New Zealand's lead. 10 points to five, 23 minutes gone in the test match. Yep, a nice hit as the Black Ferns bench look on. Not the most dominant start, so it's going to take the players like the woman on your screen, both of them, Wycliffe, Blackwell, to really inspire the team to get back up and in control of this game because the Wallaroos are not giving them many inches. Kind of this time, shallow restart. You really see New Zealand picking up the tempo. Coxedge left the box kick is a good one, taking them deep into Australian territory. Guys, keep working on your space, please. Yeah, last week the game ended in the first Laurier Rally Cup with a 70 to 30 territory step in the in favor of the black friends kendra cox said spotted that gap before anybody else in the field spotted some space got the black friends back sure where they want to be yeah it'll be game. interesting to see how the wallaroos respond here they've lived on a bit of attitude but now they've had to trudge back after conceding All points black. and now this is where they really need to settle down when it's get halfway through this first period big throw for mitchell batted away for new zealand and off the leg oh off the legs i thought of that's a running a martet. Must have been a hand in there somewhere, perhaps beforehand. Just talk really loudly. Yeah, the ref's getting a bit of comms from her touchy. So we have another look at it. Charmaine Smith just absolutely disrupting Hewitt's day in there. Look at that! By the fingertips, she beat her up. Brilliant line-out defence from Charmaine Smith. Yeah. Spider cam showing us who's set up first. Keep your shoulder up for me. Again, the Wallaroos have gone with Louis Kramer. Crouch! In behind Pomade, just out of the shot you're seeing, this beautiful spider shot we're seeing. They may run it out of their own 22 once again. Stay there. Set! Well, the scrums have been a good contest so far. This time New Zealand getting a bit of a way on getting Slide a huge out. shove on and Hamilton scrambles and does well, but it's put a back line under pressure. Poor Mari tidies up. And now they're having the hustle. Bati Basanga just directing her players, getting them in place. And they're going to have to work it out. 
New Zealand rushing up, putting the pressure on. And there's a knock on in there somewhere. Maybe it's gone both ways. First one at the breakdown there. Oh, first off New Zealand and McMenamin's face, Coxage as well. Number nine, Libra alone. It was first off black on the turnover, then it was by gold, OK? We'll have to be satisfied yeah. with that explanation. The referee just having a private conversation with Coxie's here to make sure she understood. But what about the scrum from the Black Ferns? Mamaku Aotearoa, wowee. The ref just about penalised the Wallaroos for not taking their weight. And this is the mess we were talking about before. I think in this instance, Coxie might have been right. But there was just so much going on. A call had to be made. Yeah, you might have an issue here with Alicia Pearl Nelson for the Black Ferns in number three, just going down there. You can see her on her haunches with her left shoulder. Stop as those are ready to go. It has been a huge first 20 as well for both sides. Plenty of contact and collision, plenty of meters so run. You guys were clearly under pressure in that last one and you got it out the back. Yeah. But if, if that territory if it's though for there, the Wallaroos, Ruby is yeah. of concern. Yeah. They've got 30 percent of it. So the Black Ferns doing extremely well to play the game in the right end of the field. Well, want to come away with some points now though. Absolutely, KT. Wallaroo's back line have split this time. May try and boot it out of here to turn those stats around, as you mentioned. Bind. Set. Again, the shove comes on, and that Wallaroo's scrum is going backwards at a rate of knots. The Black Ferns pumped. Their forwards laying down a marker. The referee made it clear to Hamilton just moments before the scrum, you need to hold that weight. Pat on the backs all round for the forwards. Very well deserved too. And this time, they're going for the line. Cox Edge going to plug the corner here. Ian just field New Zealand perhaps trying to ramp things up a notch. Ramp it up, they did. Look at that. The front row can't even hook because the Black Ferns just dominating it. TK adding a mate in the thick of it all. Good work. Smith it is, and the Black Ferns forwards will set and drive. Elder has it tucked in the back. Goes to ground and so Cox Edge clears Demant. Oh, big charge up from Hohepper in midfield, just a couple of metres short. Numbers wide for New Zealand, but they're not going to need them as Blackwell. She's got to scramble on the ground to get it down. They might have done well to get it underneath it, but you suspect Eloise Blackwell's got some ball to grass there. Yeah, they're going to they're going to check this upstairs and you know fairly so, but. Okay, that's fine. What a, an uh, amazing scrum, a very clean line out, the hit up uh, from your back and then your forward to finish it off. That was a very good team try, or it, we just, of us if a not, good very good team effort. So keep feeding the offside. Yeah, and we'll, we'll go for it. Just becomes a real, it's just become a real consistency from both sides when they're, when they're starting to be under pressure. So Conversation around Just looking for any reason not yeah. to award this try the ref side. Yeah. Okay. Well, they did well initially, Australia, but there's ball to ground there, surely from Blackwell. This workhorse in the second row for New Zealand. Are you there, Ami? Yep, me. Uh, yep, so that's the best angle they've got. And I'm happy that you can award the try from yeah, that angle. Yeah, so well decision. Have a good Thank you. Nice and easy. <laughs> try awarded, and that's a good way to use the TMO. Buddy Basanga initially getting her hand under there, but then clearly sliding off and onto the grass. Good use of TMO, good refereeing, and wonderful team try. Bomba was, <laughs> was hirirangi on Hohepa. Used to play together in Waikato back in the day, but there was no one else but Blackwell to get that final ball over the line. So the Black Ferns starting to gain some ascendancy. 17 points to five now they lead. Just over half an hour to go in the first, uh, half, 
half an hour gone in the first half. Excuse yeah, justification me. there from Les Alders called to go for the line out. Nice hit up from Jorge, but absorbed the hit. And then this lady on the inside of the man, absolutely brilliant line from Blackwell, doing the hard yards, doing some yards. But it's more when you guys are changing positions and running through the middle. So I'll look at first. Shallow restart. It's a good one from Australia, and Blackwell can't bring it down. So First one. just the reward and response Australia Not wanted. Well, Wonderful restart the from the Wallaroos. The vice captain Boyle and the experienced Patu were right up on the try scorer, forcing that yep. knock on. Thank you. Number six there, the vice captain Molly Boyle, only 21 years of age, but she's played New South Wales State of O. She's played plenty of rugby league and rugby. Can you keep her as straight as possible? 180 centimetres. She's a good rig on her too for rugby. Crouch. Bind. Set. Stay in. No, no. Both down. Oh, the scrum Easy. just it's causing troubles Easy. once again. Neither side. Okay, I'm gonna, a little bit more space on the up. engage. Okay, I think we're a bit close on the bind. Lou Kramer on your screen, yeah, got you know, fine. yelling direction. She is the winger, but she's the kicker as well. So she has plenty of playmaking ability to add to that back line. Australia they haven't had enough hands on ball in this area. Again, Kramer is sneakily just positioned herself behind Trillian Pomari. Might be wrapping it around like we saw in their first try. No. If the scrum will see her. Look at her angle if your shoulder's going to hide like that, okay? Yep. Well, you can probably understand Australia wanting to take a bit more time. Their last two scrums have been absolutely decimated by New Zealand. Yeah, get it up. That's better. The full fuck in the back line. <laughs> Checking her plans are right. Murphy, that's the woman they want to be getting the ball to. Out wide. Set. Stay in it. Stay in it. Don't change your mind. Australia trying to get this in and out, but they're going backwards again. Hamilton clears it away. And now coming up is Hirangi. And Fal Fakonsilia, Pomari rather. Just being driven backwards at the moment, Australia. Muttle. And now Fal Fakonsilia does well to skip through one. Gee, she's elusive, that 19 year old. And get more room to move. Through the hands they go. Hortemir met by Nelson. Get out of there, three. It's available. Australia have just gone backwards a little bit. Now starting to get a bit of a move on as Carter comes up and does well to take the short ball from Paul Marriott. Through the hands and all the good work comes unstuck. There's a lot of endeavour, but the execution not there for the Wallaroos at the moment. Well, the Wallaroos player looked up and saw Smith steaming ahead, looking for nobody else but to make a big hit. I think it might have been Patu. Okay, so I'll get the TMO to sweep all the Yeah, time. the line speed and defence from the Black Ferns has been good. This first 33 minutes, that's what applied the pressure. As you spoke about, Ruby, when you see a black jersey inside of your peripherals, it just makes you look up and, well, you don't want to be hit by this lady, I can tell you that. No, she makes plenty of arrests during the week. She's making hits in the weekend. But that's an important, part, a, important point to make, KT. The Black Ferns are used to playing 80 minutes at a very high intensity, sitting inside the top five world rankings. Australia Wallaroos are sitting at number eight. That's why playing this team is so important for their development. McMenamin off the back. Haven't seen as much of her with ball in hand so far today. It's starting to have an influence. Ali. Ball squirts out. Here's a chance for Australia to counter through the Falfoka Salia. Carter. Across the face this time, better hands in the front row from Patu. Keep the 
Ball out wide, big skip pass into the hands of Murphy, trying one on one with Letty Inger. This time goes around the bootlaces and makes a good tackle. Hasn't gone Letty Inger's way just yet. One is over. No hands, it's a rock. Bate Basanga. Oh, poor Mare. Just, oh, she's done well. Just the little juggle allowed the Black Ferns line, but then got away from a couple. Leave it black. Mato. And slow progress for Australia, inching forward up towards halfway. Here's Kramer trying to use her pace to accelerate through the gap. And again, it's messy as they're driven towards the sideline, hitting Hirangi from demand. And Ali wants to get on with things. They look to counter here. The Blackburns winning out to see nobody at home and bangs the ball downfield, but there's no real chase. It's coming from Winniata, and that's going to go to the end goal and back to the 22. 22. Wow, energy sapping stuff from both sides. Yes. Wallaroos sinking their teeth in though, not giving up. And the Black Friends forced to change it up. Again though, winning that territory battle, just frustrating for this Wallaroo side. Sorry? Yeah. We'll keep an eye on it. Kramer with the ball. Let's go. New Zealand just one short in the line here with Les Elder back down on the 10 metre line, getting some attention. So they'll counter without the captain for now, Winniata, and now Demant. Oh, hit the good one on one tackle by Boyle. That centre rocking back, but still using the legs to power forward. Oh, hey, Demant. Blackwell and Ellie. Oh, Cox Edge is hit. And now Australia a chance to rush up on New Zealand. There's a miscommunication in the Black Ferns as they hustled back. And Australia, turnover ball. Three minutes before oh, half time. What a time for the Wallaroos to get back into it. The foul, Fakal Salia. And now Paul Mare. Wide to Murphy. Mahalia Murphy's already got one heavy contact with Hohepa. The Wallaroos building, Hamilton has peeled back. Fatu. Hold. Probing the left, Australia. Now up through the middle, the foul, Fakal Salia. Who's gone backwards, says the referee, Barrett, they're on. They play on, Australia trying to get something going. Second go comes from Hewitt. No, let it come black. And now Mitchell, it's painstaking progress from Australia, but it's progress nonetheless. Ellie trying to get in over it for New Zealand. Still there for the Wallaroos. It's a rock. And now, oh, turn over the other way, but she was on there first. A penalty goes against Blackwell. Jeez. There are centimetres in this. I mean, whether you agree with Blackwell's movements or not, the ref is screaming at her that it was a ruck. Hard yards by uh, the Wallaroos. He's in the call for the scrum too, Ruby. They could probably throw this over and get some points. You've got to go have a shot, don't you? If they are, Kramer's the one to do it. What are you doing? Thank you. There you go, KT. She heard you. <laughs> I think there's a bit of a huge confidence booster though for this Wallaroo team. They can go into the half. 17 points to eight. That's a win for them, I think. Yeah, I think the attitude has been brilliant. Yeah, it's amazing uh, what a bit of self-belief does yeah, and confidence in the team. Totally different side, week two. Oh, absolutely totoko that. Support that KT because scoring last before half time, everybody knows that that stings. But the territory win I think is important for the Wallaroos to end the half up here. You know, taking it meter by meter, that turnover in the green zone for the Wallaroos and then for the Fords to keep position. Louis Kramer, the one taking the kick. 
instrumental last week in all the points that Australia got last week. Yeah, scored two tries. Didn't convert either of them. Missed her first one here today. This is a much needed boost for Australia going into half time. Oh, it's sweet from Kramer. That's the time to hit your first one. And Laurie Kramer grabs a couple back for Australia. 17 points to eight now. New Zealand lead just before half time. Yeah, good move from the Wallaroos. Laurie Kramer on your screen there. Last week, she got the two tries. Miss Zero yeah. Tackles, one of the few yeah, Wallaroos. Miss Zero I'm Tackles. Not just a change here. The captain's off for the Black Ferns. Liz Alda yeah. is no good, and she's been so replacing Juicy 20 by Kennedy Simon. Then, and yeah. then you have Cleo Black. Big moment for Kennedy, but yeah, Ricky mentioned before, Liz Alda was down for quite a while. So a penalty. And the Black Friends captain off. Win win for the Wallaroos. As the siren goes for half time, Mickey Carter's had enough. And an entertaining first half between the Black Ferns and the Wallaroos comes to an end at Eden Park, and it is New Zealand leading Australia 17 points to eight. Welcome back to Eden Park, where it was half time between the Black Ferns and the Wallaroos with the Black Ferns in control, 17 points to HF Wilson, joined by Ellie Williams for the first time tonight, Sir John Kerwin and Mills Molina. Quality tries in the first half, Mills, and it was the Black Ferns who struck first. It was quality, wasn't it? And it wasn't a very good start either. You've got to remember they dropped the ball, but all of a sudden, from their own 22, they, they sensed the opportunity, and DeMont here, well, so it was a one-on-one. -on -one. Mismatch and over she goes. Great start to the to the Ferns. Yeah, and I thought she was going to be all over. You know, the the Black Ferns are looking great. And then this this is from downtown. This is a great try. Watch this fending. I thought, wow, we've been saying this. We've been wanting to see her with the ball in hand. Get it wide earlier. They did that. And there's a that's a bump for that's, coming from Marsh. She's got to be. Mahalia Murphy at her very best. Mahalia Murphy at her best. We talked about the fact she needed to get her hands on the ball. But, Ali, you talk about the Black Ferns responding to pressure. They got themselves in the right part of the field. And then they went to work. And there was plenty more contact. This is very physical. This is huge. And, and what, what they're going direct, you know. And then we see here... Blackwell, she's inside ball and bang, she's over. You never oh. stop a lock that far out. Look at it, it's magic. That's longer, than, that's longer than any try you ever scored in a back jersey. That's one metre longer than my one. <laughs> let's yeah. talk about this game, let's talk about this contest, Mills. We knew this Wallaroos team had to come in and be more physical. They've brought that and they've brought that attitude. They know they need to have to compete with the Blackfords. Yeah, they have, and they've somewhat sort of rattled the, the Blackfords in some ways. They've sort of got real niggy, especially around the breakdown. And so, so they're getting in there, getting really physical, JK, and, and, and the Blackfords aren't liking it. Yeah, Avril Mitchell, I don't know what she's had today. She's angry. She's been pushing and niggle. And oh, I th I look at this, I love it. And I thought, well, there's going to be a punch up shortly, but. Um, they needed to bring physicality, Ali. Last week they were, you know, found wanting the Wallaroos, but tonight they've actually come out there, bit of niggle, but also a bit more physical. Yeah, well, look, this this game is alive and kicky. I mean, this is physical. You, you don't see international rugby like this with this sort of niggle. But, you know, it just means so much to them, and, and the quality and, and the way that both sides are playing, varying up between playing tight and playing loose, it's special to watch. This is very much a different contest from Perth Mills. Yeah, it definitely so. And, and those last pitches is what I like about the Black Ferns. You know, the Yes, there is a bit of niggle, but one way to really dominate is to make sure you get your set piece right. You know, that was Australian ball. They pushed them over. All of a sudden, they've gone to a, to a line out and they come back and score a try. So they're right back in it, asserting their, their physicality. JK, they've lost their captain. Les Elder, though, has gone off, which means someone else is going to have to step up. Yeah, and the leadership will have to take that over. They shouldn't, you know, miss a beat. Most important thing is the, you know, Wallaroos has been physical. It's an 80-minute game. Black Ferns come out, score early, be physical. Well, we've got a great contest on our hands as the crowd, they flood in to watch the second half of this contest. The Black Ferns in control over the Wallaroos at this stage by 17 points to eight. A much tighter and tense match between the Black Ferns and the Wallaroos. New Zealand leading 17 points to eight at halftime in the Laurie O'Reilly Memorial Trophy Series. Let's get some insight from the coaching team, starting with New Zealand's Glenn Moore. Well, Coach, what was the message at the half? Uh, get a bit more ball and to look after it. I mean, our, our cleaners, we're not doing a good job there. We're not doing a great job on the ground with it. And so there's been a lot of talk around our clean um, and also just a lot of the errors that we're making. So, you know, we're going to look to try and fine-tune that. One area you looked outstanding was the uh, scrum, but line-up you had with it? 
Yeah, I still think we can get more pressure on their line out, but our scrum's going really well. Good luck for the second half. Cheers, mate. Well, coach, I suppose the attitude in that first half, you'd be pretty pleased with that. Yeah, look, it's an improvement from last week. I guess at halftime last week, the game was almost gone, but now we're in a test match, and uh, the girls are pretty excited to get in and have a, have a crack now. Tactically, do you change anything for the second 40? Oh, we've got to tighten up our set piece. That's pretty obvious to everybody, OK? Our, our, scrum, uh, our scrum needs to fight a little bit harder, no doubt about it. So New Zealand probably on top of us there, and they know it. So we, we uh, have to show a little bit of pride there, and obviously our line-out ball. We showed what we could do when we gave the backs good ball. They, uh, they lit it up. Yeah, good luck for this again. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Two tries to one New Zealand in that first half to Manton Blackwell for the Black Ferns and Mahalia Murphy on the end of a sweeping backline move. Well, I say she was on the end of it. She created half of it herself. It was a brilliant try. Australia, no changes. But New Zealand losing their captain, Les Elder, just before half time. So Kennedy Simon on in Jersey 20 to start the second half, the final test match of the year for these teams. As we sweep across Auckland City and get underway in the second half. 17 points to eight. The Black Ferns over the Wallaroos and it's a shallow restart that's evaded everyone and now knocked on by New Zealand. Untidy start for the Black Ferns. Oh, I was almost a sneaky steal back from McMenamin. Oh, look at that. Eden Park, absolute privilege to play for both Wallers and the Black Ferns. As we get the second half underway, plenty of support out here too. It's not warm. It's not warm. Oh, sorry, me and Ricky with an OKT, but it's not warm down there. Yeah, the breeze is a little bit chilly. Ruby, but with Liz Elder off, um, Eloise Blackwell takes the captain's armband for the Black Ferns. Crouch. Fine. Shoulder out. So this is what Nat Ting, the Australian forwards coach, talked about. Need to get the set piece right. The scrum went back pretty heavily a couple of times in that first half. The break, I'll give you some time to burn it off, but let's set it, okay? And it's been very willing up front. I'll give you some time to burn it off. Never heard that one before, but the Wallaroos will take it for sure. Don't step back, okay? Hold your body weight. I'm sure there are a couple of tips Matt Tink, the Waratahs, really oh boy, to get that let the ladies know, Thank you. but the Black Ferns won't, want, won't be wanting anything to change. Crouch, find, set, better scrum from Australia, Hamilton off the back for Bate Basanga. And now another backline move. Kramer coming in from the left. Laurie oh, Kramer's dangerous if she gets a bit of room to move with her pace. Now they try and bang it away downfield, only as far as Winniata, straight down her throat. Whitcliffe haven't seen a lot of ball the New Zealand back three today. And now they've got a little bit to play with. Whitcliffe. McMenamin charging through the first tackle and then carrying Herangi up over halfway. Alley goes to the boot again. That's just skied up for Kramer. She attacks the ball well. Good tackle around the ankles from Whitcliffe. Okay, I'm gonna play on. Is that enough? And Alley has taken a knock in that contact. I think Chelsea Alley getting up a bit slowly. Yeah. The ball was there. You could see she was going in for the steal, but just gets taken out. About her. Black friends have come up 20. with the ball, but if we have a look here, it was Ellie herself who took the kick, and then Kramer comes up. Nice take. Whitcliffe with the chop tackle, and oh, it was number two, Mitchell. Just gets the side I'm of sure. the face here, Ruby, right yeah, there. I'm unsure what the touch he would have seen. Remember, they're sweeping all the time, guys. We'll Replay, but unsure the ref saw it. It looked like accidental contact, really, as she came in, but Ellie's bounced back, back up. Tough Waikato less. Good on it. Just look out for Renee Wickler. She's directly behind the man. And Chelsea Ali, the right-hand winger, ready to inject herself. She has got some brilliant feet. 
Six. Here is Ellie. Oh, she's got Wickliffe outside. It doesn't need it. Goes through herself. Ellie now winning out big wide ball to Litsy Yang. A one on one. The power of Aisha Litsy Yang is almost there. Oh, winning out just running out of room. But the first glimpses in the second half of the pace and the power in this Black Ferns back line. Oh, as exciting as you like. Lucky Chelsea Ellie got back up because she's the one who started this. Makes the break. Sees there's two options outside. It goes for the skip pass over top, but the power from it to just knock off Carter. Even Kramer couldn't contain her devastating run. Tries to pop it open, but there was just no room left for Winniata. Wallaroos gave Lafol Fakosi Lea a pat on the back, but they're definitely not out of jail yet. Oh, it's tough for Buddy Basanga. Now she's done well, the little halfback. Just to buy a team some time. Hamilton off the back is wrapped up by Tapsell and Nelson. Need to exit well here, Australia. That's down to Winniata on the 10 metre line. Leon. And now the counter again from the Black Ferns fullback in her 40th. Then Win uh, Wycliffe rather stepping her way through one. Demand and Winniata again. Ball's gone. Backward says the referee. Now the knock on from Hawhepper. It just breaks down for New Zealand. Boyle ripped away by Blackwell. Still there for New Ze uh, for Australia rather. Trying to scramble their way out of danger. The Wallaroos. And I'm going to take the relief back. off and go back to the knock-on. Well, there's a lot going on as Hamilton calls her troops back. No advantage. So, but I just wanted to mention, you know, so it comes off Winniata here, and Letty Inga is not on side to me. That To me, that's an offside. I think the Wallaroos will pick that up in their analysis. So perhaps a bit of calm here as Wallaroos get out of jail and get the scrum that have, they've cleaned up very, very nicely. Black Ferns lucky there. Well, scrum time again. It was pretty good, the first one from the Wallaroos. I think with their put in, they just want to get this in and out. And be interesting to see whether they use the strong breeze behind their back. They look like they're ready to run once again. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, really wanting, the Wallaroos will really want to assert their dominance back in the scrum time because Black Friends were all over them in that first half. Fine. Six. Again, it starts to crib away and oh, Bati Basanga had about four goes at it and clung on. Still holding on Australia, desperate to get out of their own half. Hold. Kramer bangs it away downfield and they'll get a penalty and that will take some of the pressure off. Uh, never on side, number six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number six, Pia Tapsel, Black Fern. The warm screen there. Yeah, the timing the refs did have a talk to her in the first half as well. Okay, thank you. So clamping down on that. I'm impressed with the Wallaroos yeah, KT yeah. to six. have not only defended a try from, you know, devastating backs, but to get some territory back as well. Oh, it's a relieving penalty, that's for sure, Ruby. But you're right, they're in their own corner, remember, just moments earlier. They've done well to repel them. Here's a good scrum. Good control there, too, by Bati Basanga. And keep this ball in. I promise this is not a circus, but that was some very good juggling. Black, I gave you the line. Please stay on the line. Yeah, all of you. All of you, yeah. It's I the Wallaroos now taking their time to enter. Okay. Thanks. The line out line and try and confuse your opposition. Good play by Matt Tink. Down the back they go, and that's good ball for Mato Kramer. And a herangi with Ali ripping it away for New Zealand. Brilliant turnover by the New Zealand midfielder. And now they look to scoot away. Wickliffe's got space. She's got forwards in front of her. Runs into Buddy Basanger and taken down 25 metres out. Nata hiding a Marty on the charge. Hold 
Australia. Ali, who started it all with the turnover, just stands in the tackle of poor Marty, waits for the support to come in. Push back, push back. Work hard on space. McMenamin. Hold, push back. Ripped away by Mato, though, for Australia in tandem Here with Hamilton. Good turnover work by the Australian Lucy's again. Really sticking in the fight. Yes, in 10 minutes of the second half, the Wallaroos, yes, but giving away another penalty. Six is straight up. Coptage wants to get on with things, on. but might just settle things down a little here. The Black Ferns veteran. Pia Tapsell again. Ricky, with this turnover, she's been a monster at the breakdown. Both teams have been very good. Yeah, I still can't believe that it was her debut just this year, Ricky. Yeah, she's made an incredibly assured start. Ellie getting that turnover earlier. Yeah, the back's getting one in there. <laughs> Charmaine Smith cleaning out the ever-present Hamilton. But she still creates the turnover for the Wallaroos. Oh, it was like ping-pong back and forth yeah. for a while. But a very um, conserved decision. Okay. Get the points, get up to 20. Yeah, I saw Black that. Ferns so, um, keep making the sure they're rewarded for the territory yeah, successes. Cox Hedge, amazing player. She's hit 50 caps, only the second woman to ever do so. Oh, she's hit that as well. Hit that perfectly, Kendra Cox Edge straight over the black dot. And she does take New Zealand out to a 20 points to eight lead. Hondu Craft has this woman. As you see, beautiful strike through, head down. Runs back because she knows it's going over. Her 50th test, which was brought up against France, we recognised at half time in the Bledisloe Cup match between the All Blacks and Australia coming up next. As Kramer sends it down to Winniata. Getting more involved tonight, Salika Winniata. No gold, let it come on the body. No, let it come. Oh, going backwards, Nata Aringamate. Simon's hit hard. Dent back. The New Zealand youngster. Black Ferns forwards working it out from deep inside their own territory. And now Ali clears it away. In just off the side, and it was taken back into the 22. An error from New Zealand. Yeah, that, they'll be really gutted with that. Well, Chelsea Ali, massive hit. And as you said, Ricky, Kennedy Simon just getting a good old introduction to Test Rugby. Absolute double teamed. Liz Patu, very experienced woman on defence as well. There's no level one to tackling, okay? You're just straight in there. Hopefully a big future ahead for Kennedy Simon as well. well Alicia Pill Nelson went down in that first half. Came back and New Zealand put on a massive scrum. Charmaine McMenamin, number eight for New Zealand. Two tries last week. Starting to get more involved, and gee, she carries hard, Ruby. Absolutely making the McMinnon name synonymous with that number eight jersey for Mamaku Aotearoa. Really coming to her own. I like her because she's quite a humble player. She puts her head down, does the work, and she ends up getting the rewards. I mean, she got two tries last week. She's, you know, helping out the rest of her pack, supports, compliments Liz Alda very well as well. And now Kennedy Simon. What's so good about her though, Ruby, is because the game's changed, very different from last week. She's played a lot tighter. She's got over the advantage line. What you need is a number yeah. eight, and people follow her. That's the thing about this young lady. She's playing seven big and tonight. Three. Seven and three. Oh, so. Yeah, I agree with you, KT. You've got to have players that are versatile in their role, especially if you lose forwards. Seven. The change, or a couple of them, in fact, for the Wallaroos, have gone That's to their bench. Right. Jersey 18, Christina Sekona Zon replacing. Uh, the three Horo Mia and also Jersey 20 Emily Chancellor okay. is on so she's replacing the Opus Mato. 
Well, Emily Chancellor started last week. They've switched roles this week. Shannon Matok. And some good ball. Is Australia's player of the year. Wallaroo's player of the year last year, Emily Chancellor, and she only made a debut against New Zealand. See what sort of impact she can have. Good ball for Leonard. Here's the first touch for Sikonis, the big body to bring down. And Patut wrestling with her own team, trying to get some go forward for the Wallaroos. Much better build up this time from Australia. Thank you. Mitchell's got it in the back. Goes herself the Aussie hooker. Good ball security, but there's McMenamin. Just as we were speaking of it, putting in the hard yards in tight as well. Now Australia might look to spread. A little knock on there, perhaps, but they'll play on regardless. And look to spread and spread wide. Oh, winning out of the anguish. Look on her face. Oh, the clap of the hands. That's frustrating. It was right there, set up for it. Wow, well, well, Winniata will be upset about that one because there was nobody back there. I don't know if you could see it at home, but all the meters and the work that this Ford pack have put in could have been to no avail if we have a look here. I could, you can see what the Fofoka Osile was trying to do, but look at that. Winniata, one of the fittest, one of the quickest, she would have been away. Well, defensively, that's exactly what you want. She knows straight away, she's going, no. But you want that big pass over the top because the last man, and in this case, it's going to be Winniata, can come off her line, and take that intercept pass. They was waiting for it. Yeah, the Fords is having a wee inu here. Twice we've got hands on her. Here we go, Smith with directions with McMenamin. The forwards being really employed in the second half. What I love about the Wallaroos forwards is they're forcing players like Smith, players like McMenamin, to play those tight games so they're not dangerous on attack. You can't get any closer to the tactics. You can see there just Charmaine Smith talking about the slow pass. The Pati Pasanga said, get on there and disrupt it. As we see the All Black sideline, keen on lockers. We've just had a sense around the ground all afternoon about both of these matches and Australia's women here and Wallaroo certainly playing their part in a tighter contest and of course the All Blacks and Wallabies coming up next. Fine. Set. Oh, that scrum disintegrating and somehow, once again, Vanessa Bati Basanga, she's had a torrid day at the base of it, has done well. Ball wasn't out, Tetzel can't get her hands on that. Well, she got her hands on it, she just didn't so legally. Never on side. <sighs> Never on side. Captain, I'll grab her now. Points. So that's that's three off sides by six black. I think she did. So that one was she just never made it on side. The timing, she would have had a good turn. I would let her go, but she just never made it to last week. Yeah. Thank you. So Kramer for Australia, just to peg it back a little more. It's about 26 metres on the angle here, Ricky. As I spoke about, there is still a healthy breeze right in behind us, so Link shouldn't be a problem. Just suck it out to the middle to the left and she'll be fine. Oh, she struck it. Run just before half time beautifully. It's a big kick for Laurie Kramer just to keep Australia in touch. Oh, pushes it to the right though. It looked good. 
just away. So New Zealand still out by 12, 20 points to eight. Yeah, we're just going to have a change here in the front row for the Wanneroos. Mitchell was gone, who night is over, and replacing the jersey 16 is Ash Masters. Oh, she'd be disappointed, Kramer, to miss that kick. She's done so well in those big moments in both these test matches of the Laurie O'Reilly Cup. <laughs> There is Masters' first touch. Good attacking position here for Australia. Hamilton collides with Simon. Bati Basanga, nice quick ball to work with. Hira Hirangi stepping away from Ali. Starting to grow in confidence with ball in hand, Australia. Carter. Hamilton well read. The two number eights come together. Carter and McMenamin. Patu. Mata Oringa Mate clinging on around the boot laces. Patu did well just to hold on to the ball there. Sikona. Good continuity from Australia as Hamilton charges forward. The captain caught in a slightly awkward position and it's been ripped away by McMenamin. And now New Zealand try to break away. Ellie with support from Letty Ying and just running out of room. Got caught in two minds a little bit there. Chelsea Ellie and Mika Carter takes the ball out into touch. Oh, Ellie be disappointed, but I think she did a good job breaking the line. She knew she had the weapon of Letty Ying outside. You could see what she was trying to do. But what about this for our matchup we talked about before the game? Eight on eight. Oh, beautiful. Huge contacts up in the kitchen in the heat of it all. And that's where the turnover came from for the Black Ferns. They were just hitting after hit after hit. Just the alley though, Ruby, making herself a lot more visible, getting more touches in the second 40 minutes and had a strong start to this half. And here you can see just the result of that heavy contact. McMinimum up and ready to go again. Yeah, she heard the orders loud and clear of her coach, Glenmore. He wanted more physicality and the Black Ferns have been doing Plenty of double tackles, double hits, creating turnovers, which has been, if we have a listen to Buddy Basinga quickly. Got to Chrissy, yeah? Big scrum, hey? Buddy Basinga has been a bit of a general at the back of the scrum for this Wallaroo side. Late call up, as you mentioned, Ricky, for a concussion, but she really controls them well. It looks like Tuka Nato is going to come off just for an HIA assessment. There's a time limit on that, so she'll just be given one shot on the HIA test. Hopefully she'll be okay. Good to see the Tane, the All Blacks out here supporting the Wahine Toa. The ladies notice it, and I know the guys do when they support them as well. We're just waiting for a prop. No, the Black Ferns oh. reserves are down the other end, warming up. So they're just coming back to the bench now. No, hey, T, put your boots on. HIA. We're waiting for a replacement. Oh, well, chuck the way at the tip, Ruby. You know that. Poor old Leilani Parise. Yeah, He's been she's... down in the corner. He's had to charge on. And 17 and now packed down a scrum. At least she's warm. Ricky, ready to go. Be interesting to see how this first scrum goes. A lot of changes in the front row for both teams. 11th cap for Nilani Parise, all off the bench since she made her debut last year. Here in 17, right in front of us. Crouch. Matching up against Christina Sikon, another new player on field. Find. Steady. Steady. Resets and scrums are frustrating, but I don't mind these because you can tell that each side just doesn't want to give anything. You know, the Black Ferns really dominating the Wallaroos a couple of times. The Wallaroos coming back. It's been a huge battle in the set piece, which we knew it would be after last weekend. I'm impressed with the determination from both Ford Packs tonight. Fine. Stay there. Set. Steady. Stay here. Black Ferns get a second shove on, and again, Buddy Basanga clears well for Paul Mari. Oh, that's a nice ball for Hede Harangi. <laughs> Penalty New Zealand. Neck roll. Neck, ah, roll. neck roll around the rack, and Coxedge wants to get on with things. Nata Oringa Mate 
had no support outside it, was looking for a winger, couldn't find one, goes to ground. Nelson with Tapsell right up the backside, driving them forward, the Black Ferns. Demant, McMenamin over the 22. New Zealand probing, testing the Australian defence again. Numbers out wide, Ali goes up through the middle of Chelsea Ali busting tackles, brought down two metres short. Can't get the ball clear, but they go back for the penalty. Coxedge gets a wriggle on. Poor Hepa. Poor Hepa crashes over. Too much pace, too much power. The Black Ferns there. And Carla Hohepa in for New Zealand. Well, for me, it started back at the scrum. Black Ferns forwards didn't give anything. Created the turnover there. Kennedy Simon got the turnover. But Hohepa and Coxedge, the experience, both debuted back in 07. Coxage, two quick taps in a row. That comes from experience. All the Fords wanted to say, hold on, backs, give us a moment. We'll make it easier for you. Alley through the middle. Oh, it was just beautiful, beautiful rugby to watch. No clear release here. That was the penalty. And Coxage said, why are we stopping, people? Exciting stuff from this Blackfriend side. Yeah, the two centres just introducing themselves. It was a nice run by Alley again in the second half, and then just the power to back it up. From her outside partner in Jersey 13, Carla Hohepa, well done. Oh, Carla Hohepa coming back into the side this year after a year and a half out after the World Cup. The second child. She's, we've just seen her build through the Super Series and then in the last two matches. Absolutely. As well as Ali and Hohepa as a, as a, you know, a duo together. They've just grown into the season together. Kicks away from Cox Edge, but New Zealand now with a stranglehold on this match. 25 points to eight, 18 minutes to play. Just on with you, Ruby, just this lady here, changing the tempo, making it a bit faster. The Australians getting caught off their heels. Yeah, and Ali and Jorge, but having the experience to know when the momentum needed to be changed, backing up Cox Edge right there with it. That's why this Blackfin side is so dangerous. When they switch momentum like that, quite unstoppable. That one evades Coxedge, so scampers back. New Zealand vice captain and clears well. 20 minutes to go here. The Black Ferns will still want to control this throwout because the Wallaroos really stood up at the back end of that first half. So big eyes are on the bench as we see Coxedge the great leave the field yeah, and replacing the jersey 21 is Marino Tohinu good ball off the top this time for Australia Hamilton roaming For Marit. And Fal Fakal Salia trying to slip the pass away and does so for Carter. Brought down 20 metres out. Good hands from Chancellor. Getting some forward momentum, Australia, and some nice quick ball to play with. For Marit. Fatiba Sanga pass goes backwards. And it's Litsi Yanga, quickest back. to the loose ball. We're going back. Dangerous tackle. We're going back for a high tackle. I think it might have been yeah, the one here. on the Fuck Fakal Salia. Just crept up a little bit. Uh, just dangerous. The ref wants to catch up on a bit of fitness, runs back. Advantage played. <laughs> Too high, 12 And back. it is for a high tackle on Chelsea Ali. Be interesting to see what the Wallaroos choose to do here, KT. You might see the line-out, Ruby. I don't think you want to call a scrum. Line-out's been pretty good. Yeah, I'm with you. This is where they showed what they were made of in the first half. Oh, they hurt us. <laughs> well, Wally Moore's the option, obviously, here, isn't it? There's a couple of replacements being made by Dwayne Nesta, the 15. Wallaroos coach. On in jersey 22 is Arabella McKenzie replacing Paul Marty, and also in jersey 23, Samantha Trahern is replacing Carter. Time's off, so we'll just get them to set. 
Jack, I'm still off. So that'll mean Mahalia Murphy will drop to fullback for Australia and Traherne nominated for World Rugby Sevens Rookie of the Year this year. She'll slot out onto the wing. Oh, that lineup that had been functioning so much better has gone awry for Australia, and it's Simon first to the loose ball. Has Marina Tohinu. Yeah, yeah. Hold Looks it. to clear away. Captain, just in the line up. Let's go. Don't so grab them early. Let them come Blake down Friends and then take choosing to clear it. A little bit of breathing space. But you're doing this, Sorry, choosing what? to change Sorry, up. What? Yeah, I'm not ready though. Pretty crucial part of their back you. line. That's better to the front. Good wrestle by Leonard and a penalty. In the air. In the air. In the air. The ref made the call. So the Blackfish is right, pulling the Wallaroos player down. And again, the Wallaroos playing with some confidence going with the line out. Well, they've got to keep pressing, don't they? 15 minutes to play. They've given a much better account of themselves. They're able to get the Black Ferns on the back foot. Sub Black oh, six. Blackwell. Ref deemed her hand grabbing of the Wallaroos player on the opposite. It's hard though for the Black Ferns forward pack when they know that there's a rolling maul coming. You've got to stop it before it turns into a maul as we have another substitution. Jackie okay. Patia Fiditi on board. Fia Tapps has had a very good night at the office. Oh, welcome return for Jackie Patia Fiditi as well. Yep. Been out with injury, so okay, first appearance this season. Wellington oh. veteran. Again, they go to the back, and again, it's a mess, and it just allows McMenamin to wait for the ball to bounce into her hands and set New Zealand away again. Advantage. Good hands, Parisi, and advantage being played by, for the Black Ferns. Great charge, Parisi, up over the 22, getting New Zealand out of the danger zone. Marina Utohinu saw a little bit of a gap. Simon. Takes another big hit, Kennedy Simon. And now space for McMenamin. She's got Wycliffe. And Demand in support. Wycliffe still there. Demand and Wycliffe working in tandem. Wycliffe skipping out of one, stepping away from another, clinging on to the ball only just as she went to ground. McMenamin. She's in everything, Charmaine McMenamin. Ellie chips it ahead. For Letty Yinger, she's great under a high ball. It worked for them last week, and it could work again here. Letty Yinger picks and goes again. So hard to put down. Okay. Referee again playing advantage New Zealand's way. Nelson still charging hard after 67 minutes. Tight head prop. No, no, no scrum off. Demand. Demand goes herself. Demand, and she's got support from her. Charmaine McMenamin worked her socks off and now she gets the reward as well. Chris, no way. Really good response to Lever. Excellent work from the entire the team. The we had a kick okay. pass in there. We had all Sorry? sorts and Charmaine McMenamin, as you yeah. said, Ricky, yeah, was in the yeah. thick of it all. Yes, she's got no got socks left because she's worked them right off, as you say. Involved in this play here, demand spots and opportunity. It was, an, it was a numbers game. Wycliffe, geez, she's hard to defend. Her footwork, crazy level elusive. And demand with the playmaking ability to see the slight, slightest gap to set up her number eight. Wow. Oh, Chelsea Alley taking over the kicking duties. Chelsea Alley taking over kicking duties with Coxedge on the bench, but she had a huge part to play in this try as well. And strikes that easily between the uprights. Well, they've had to work hard for it this time, the Black Ferns, but now pulling away 32 points to eight. Look at the way that Demand just holds up this ball up. She fends off the defender. That's brilliant work by the number 10. She's really challenged the line tonight. Just an update on Toka Nato. She's failed with HIA, so Parisi has gone for the evening. And Salika Wuniart has gone. And congratulations to Grace Booker on her debut. Grace Booker, Canterbury lass, 
have to get a mention. Performed very well in all the trials, so I'll be very happy to get her debut tonight. Patia Feliti, there's Brookett just standing in the back. What a moment for the 20-year-old, the youngest in the squad. Oh, straight up the middle, Parisi, enjoying some extra game time. Getting good impact She's off the bench, New Zealand. Marina Tahinu wants to carry on where Coxage left off. Patia Feliti again. Big wrestle on the ground. Marina Tahinu cleaned up, then picked herself up. Cleared the ball away. Demant and Ali once more. Blackburn starting to fling it around a bit. McMenamin looked to get the arms free, still charging forward. And now space down the short side. Hall here for Letty Ng. It doesn't need much room, but they hustle it towards the sideline. And now it's gone out off an Australian hand. And a penalty too. Yeah, clean on the ground and also. Unlucky for Sam Trehearn. But the Black Ferns really starting to put on a show now, Ruby. Yeah, what I love about the dynamic between Coxedge and Marina Tohinu is they both play, they can both play a really quick momentum game. And so she's come on and left nothing that Coxedge couldn't play as well. If we see this, as Liti Inga gets ever so close to this touchline, she just drops the ball inside. And then the touchy Cool. Samantha Trahine is the one who plays on the ground and takes the ball out eventually. Uh, Getting another change for the Black Ferns on in Jersey 22 is Christian Cottle replacing the very impressive Chelsea Alley. The winger, yep. Now, as Alley departs the field, this is a very well known move by the Black Ferns. Getting all the backs in there, it'll be the biggest more you're going to see. Bigger than Rickett and Moreland Christchurch. There's a lot of noise, there's a lot of momentum, but there's also a penalty against them. All the people in the world. Come on, transfer. But they can't avoid the eyes of the referee. Very smart Long of the Wallaroos. Long arm transfer. So if she wants it, she needs to rip. But there's players that came between. So clarifi clarification very clear from the ref. I don't know how the Wallaroos did that, but it worked and it left the Black Ferns penalised for obstruction. As we see here, Blackhawk grabs the ball early but it was a long arm release and the ref deemed it too long. There were too many people in between, so obstruction was the call. Glenmore will not be happy with that. Hamilton, oh, charging hard. Still full of running. Short ball for Murphy, does well to hold on under the attention of Whitcliffe. Really get some support. She finished to ground Mahalia Murphy. So what a brilliant try in the first half. I just haven't seen as much of it. And here's a first touch for Brooker. Eager and willing to have a run back. Bet your bottom dollar she'll take them on. Grace Brooker gets rid of two and then runs into a third. Good turnover. Good turnover. And has the ball ripped away. Great work on Defence Australia. Here to Hirangi trying to put some footwork on, but New Zealand's defence has been very miserly today. Jeez, we have a look. I mean, you could see what she was trying to do, create something, was nothing on. Gets around a few Wallaroos, which isn't hard to do, but welcome to international rugby was the call. Where she comes in with a double tackle, huge hit by Masters on the debutant. Yeah, three changes for the Wallaroos, too, on the Jersey 17 is Emily Robinson, 19, Rebecca Clough, and also Jersey 21, Alana Ilisaya. That's not too bad for a first touch. Three beaten defenders. Take that. Three to one. We'll take that. New Zealand's cleared the benches as well. With Luca Connor on at hooker now, and Olivia Ward doing. In the air. In and congratulations to, to Rebecca Clough. Her 24th no cap for Australia there. makes her an equal record holder for the Wallaroos. Yeah, Rebecca Clough, she's been around for a very long time. Very good lady off the field as well. Western Australia can be proud. One more game and she's a record holder for them. Christian Cottrell with the clear. Here's Rebecca Clough there, big moment for her. 
So Cotterell slips in at first five for New Zealand and Demant out one to second. Now these fresh legs. There's Luca Connor. Patia Ferretti and McMenamin supporting her. Ward Dillon, good charge from the new prop in just her second test. Short side work for New Zealand again. McMenamin back in field for Patia Ferretti. Good impact coming off the bench. Ward Dillon again. Oh, New Zealand forwards, New Zealand reserves. Plenty of energy, plenty of running. And now Cotterell to the air. The kick pass is there for Wycliffe underneath and it hangs in the air for her. Ball popped up for Brooke, it can't quite hold on. And a knock on in the process. But it almost fell for Grace Brooker on debut. Oh, such a good option by Cotterell. This is what they couldn't seem to do in the Super Series New Zealand is the kick pass. But as we can see, it's on. And it was just a tiny miscommunication, which I guarantee you, Grace Brooker will not forget. As Wycliffe catches a beautiful punt by her reserve first five. Oh, so good to watch. I love a good kick pass. If only the pop worked too. Crouch. Find. Easy, easy. Set. No, no, just a slip here. We can check it. Good work, Chris. Referee still having to play the cool head in the scrum situation. Yeah, we can see the slip there. Do you, do you try to shift it a bit? Talked about it earlier, but the bench are just going to play such a massive role in this game with just over five minutes to go. And the Black Ferns bench, I think, at the moment, doing a bit better than the Wallaroos. All trying to put their hand up to start. Plenty of support out here for Australia, though. Good to see. No, stop this. Bind. Stay here. Steady. Steady. Set. Stay in it. Australia's scrum going backwards, but charging forward now. Kramer. Bangs it away. Found some open space and she's got the space to Traherne. It's a good one and one. Letty Inger can hear the footsteps of Traherne coming. Brooker does well and now Brooker's got some space and plenty of speed herself and the power. Grace Brooker gets rid of two. Charges into a third. Great counter from Grace Brooker. Good return. Smith. Cotterell and Parisi roaming in midfield. The replacement prop. Leaves her opposite in her wake. Marina Tohinu spies a little bit of room, sniping around the base. Cotterell in support. Hold here, hold for me. Black Ferns looking for another one in the final four minutes at Eden Park. No. Parisi again. Pulls up. Eating metres at will, Blackwell and Smith. The twin terrors still going. Poor Hepa. Letty Iyenga. Letty Ayusha. Letty Iyenga's over, but she's held up this time. Hold up. Yes. So close for the 20 year old. Oh, what an effort. Both 20 year olds were involved in that. Grace Brooker right up in support of Letty Iyenga. Whole Hepa knew the damage of that leg drive of none other than Letty Iyenga. Thumbs off. Well, is doing well, though, as we see. Oh, Hepa knows who exactly who she's passing that ball to. That woman right there, 20 years old. Leg drive, ladies and gentlemen, is key. There's no one better. Wallaroo's just holding that up, though. Laurie Kramer holding on for dear life underneath the future of the Black Ferns team. Yeah, Letty Ling is one of those players, though, Ruby, can just feel every time she touches the ball, the crowd just gets up. They know something's going to happen. And this girl talking on, talking on screen now, Grace Hamilton has been amongst everything. Still pushing it nice and hard, as you spoke about. Got across and helped save that tackle. She's been brilliant, the number eight for the Wallaroos. Well, they've been well beaten in the series now, the Wallaroos, but with so much young talent blooded this season and two tests against Japan and a leader like Grace Hamilton, you can see what Dwayne Nest is trying to build for the 2021 World Cup. Yeah, Sidney Hortonese is just having to come on. It's injury replacement late in the piece. Yeah, I'll 
Yeah, plenty of promise in this Wallaroo side. Australia doing so good in the women's AFL, the women's league, the women's sevens. Now the women's 15s are forging their own pathway. Huge future ahead of this pack. What a great attacking position though, Ruby, for this Black Ferns team. They're going to be tough, especially the way their scrum has been laying the platform. Absolutely, and the elusive Leti Inga right behind, as you mentioned, KT. If they get the way on, I don't think McMiniman let this, lets this go, does she? starting to crib across field, so McMenamin won't get a chance, and Australia's come through and hustled New Zealand off the ball. Chancellor, but it's won back by New Zealand illegally, so penalty Australia. Yeah, ref just close, deeming that close. Marino Tohino yeah, was off. She, her face says she disagrees. But, well, the Wallaroos definitely getting out there, getting out of jail there, sorry. Huge scrum. If we have a another look here, they put on all sorts of pressure. And McMinimum heard KT saying she was going to get a try and just couldn't control it. They've got to give it to their Wallaroos pack, though, showing some staunchness there, some pride with that scrum first time tonight. Yes, KT and the bench standing up again. Impressive. Masters down the back, tapped away. Hamilton. Through well, the hands they go, still working as Leonard. Yep, she's fine. Kramer tries to clear. It's a good clearing kick from Laurie Kramer. Look at Brooker flying yeah. over the Hordings, wants to get the ball back and get on with it. She's bought some energy. Only two minutes left of her debut game. Very hard trainer. Well, give me some time. The captain, Lizzie Ardo, gave you all sorts of compliments about her work off the pitch. Let's go, Black. Let's go. Luca Connor, another star of the Come future. Off. The Wallaroos, you know, with the foul, fuck all Celia. I think these women will be playing against each other for many years to come, which is just so exciting. Time back on. Connor overthrows, and it's taken down by Chancellor. So perhaps Australia with the final chance to attack. A little flourish at the end. Nefal Fakal Salia does well. Oh, she's strong. She's a slight player, but she's utterly fearless. The 19-year-old. Good charging run forward by Robinson. Good turnover. She's turnover good. ball though by Blackwell, New Zealand. First one there. Does not stop working. Eloise Blackwell. Quick hands, Letty Iinga. What can she create herself? Trying to step her way through a lot of traffic. Oh, you should, Letty Iinga. And that ball has not got back there the right way. Sam Drew in front of the referee. Easy, easy. No, easy, easy. She showed her pace early on, but that was definitely off her feet there. Our camera crew all over that one. But. I mentioned earlier on the Black Ferns bench showing what they're made of, but I'm really impressed with this last little surge from the Wallaroos. And their bench, less than a minute left. The Wallaroos have really worked on what they needed to. And I can't wait for these two teams to meet again. Final chance for New Zealand. Time almost up on the clock. The Laurie O'Reilly Trophy well secure in the cabinet again. A chance to finish off here on a fine performance. A hard fought victory for sure, despite the final scoreline. Cottrell, they rush off on her. Let's see Inga. As well to hold on to the ball under the attention of Masters. A bit of work short again. Party affinity. Cotterill wants the kick pass again, or instead this time it's for Wycliffe to chase. Gets a helpful bounce and now gets the footwork going. Flick ball out the back for Jorge, but she's got Brooker with her. Brooker with an eye for the corner, gets the fend on Kramer, stays in field. Does Brooker. Still there for the Black Ferns. 
just seven metres short. Cotterill. Short ball for Ward Dillon. New Zealand forwards piling in. They want one more before this game is out. Smith and Hohepper. Flick ball there for Brooker. Tries to spin out of the tackle. Inching closer. Connor. Luca Connor driving for the try line. She looks to be over it. She certainly held up. Ball still there. And now it's on the ground. Squeezed in the corner. Charmaine Smith is going to claim the try, and I think she's got it right. Yeah, Ricky. I'm um, backing Smith in the corner after a relentless effort of this Black Fern side. They wanted to send a message. They wanted to make their coach smile. I don't I'm know sure if they've done that, but I just want to double check if she they've made New Zealand course. smile tonight, and I think no they will be ending on a try. No knock on. Yep. One more look here. Luca Connor was short. Charmaine Smith. Yeah. Good to go. With the support of Kennedy Simon and Brooker involved again. Yeah, I just heard like a double sign. And I thought it maybe bounced off her. Yeah, Lee, I'm happy with I think they're checking for a knock-on, the but there's nothing wrong with that. The second row is the experience of the Black Ferns have stood up tonight in that engine room, and both of them scoring. I'll wait on your call. All right, Amy, just wait till we're back on you on screen, please. Okay. All right, yes, I'm happy. <laughs> Charmaine Smith's try is given. The Black Ferns bench on their feet. A wonderful finish to what has been a near-perfect season. For the Black Ferns, and Kristen Cotterell has the last say. Conversions away, but the trophy's in the cabinet. The victory is on the board. The Black Ferns take it out over Australia at Eden Park, 37 points to eight. The Black Ferns' sixth and final test of the year. They're only one at home, and it has finished in emphatic fashion. New Zealand beating Australia 37 points to eight and retaining the Laurie O'Reilly Memorial Trophy. Let's head down sideline for the presentation with Kirsty Stanway. This Black Fern side is a model of consistency. The players, they are rock stars on the field and they're role models off the field. And we see all of that here today at Eden Park. L welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official presentation of the Laurie O'Reilly Memorial Trophy. Joining me on stage is President of New Zealand Rugby, Bill Osborne. Great to have you here, Bill. And from Rugby Australia, Josephine Suka, Women's Rugby President. Fantastic to have you here also. It's now time to get the captain of Australia up to the stage, Grace Hamilton, to say a few words. Well, Grace, it wasn't the result that you wanted here today. What did you make of the match? Look, it was tough. New Zealand are a tough opposition, but full credit to those girls. They, they come together well, and I am so proud of our team tonight. We really wore a heart on our sleeve, and I just hope we did Australia, and I'm <laughs> proud, and I'm so privileged to lead these girls. They're so special. You've had a number of tests this year, Japan. You were in Perth last week and here in New Zealand this week. What do you think of women's rugby at the moment? It's growing and we're so happy to be part of it and I can't wait to see where it leads in the future. But for us, we just got to keep playing test footy and I think you can see the improvement in these girls and I can't wait to see what we can, we can bring in the next future. What would you like to say about New Zealand and their performance out here in these last two tests? They're a quality team and um, we love playing them. They, they, they wear their heart on their sleeves. They, they're really good opposition and we'll, we'll come and play them next year as well. So it'll be great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You're an absolute beast out there today. Thank you. Thanks everyone for coming out to support us. We really appreciate being here and being part of this. Awesome. Well done, Australia. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. It's now time to get the captain of New Zealand, Liz Alder, up onto the stage. Come on up, Liz. Congratulations, Liz. You've retained the Laurie O'Reilly trophy and you continue your unbeaten run against Australia. What does this mean to the team? Yeah, I mean, it's really special and to be able to do it um, on Eden Park at home in front of our crowd and our families, um, real special for us. You were fantastic in Perth and you backed that up here today. What did you make of the team's performance? Yeah, I mean, it was a bit of a shaky start, um, but the girls did well to absorb the pressure and to still put on some points and score some tries like that. And 
uh, play pretty expensively was, was really good. After winning the Super Series in San Diego, coming to a sold-out Eden Park, well, what do you think of that as a team? Yeah, it's really cool. Um, if last week in Perth was, you know, unreal experience to be able to play on that stadium. Um, and again, to do that here is really, really cool. So um, all the best to the All Blacks too. Thank you very much. Thank you for setting the stage here tonight. I'm pretty sure everyone was thoroughly entertained by that performance. So well done. And it is now time for the official trophy handover. So Bill Osborne, New Zealand Rugby President, please do the honours.